you know, people come back and still uh, put, leave comments and all that stuff, still showing support and all that good stuff. And uh, we, we keeping the fire burning. We keeping it hot. Beverly Foster says the guy that marked, murked <laughs> Andre Montgomery, yeah, was recorded telling his brother in prison about the dead. That's how they uh, caught Tim Norman. What? Well, hopefully one of the Cabo Six will rat on him or herself. Yes. And two, if nothing else, we got the video and, you know, with audio, we hear, we see all them over there. To me, that is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Just see here. Yeah, it's too low to hear. Yeah, I apologize, y'all. And I'm not even sure where I can find that video at. But here we go. All right, so let's now go over here to our document. <laughs> go over here, share this here. Document. Um, all right, so this is what we know here. We know that this sign-in sheet has seven names on it. And if we take away Shanquilla's name, we are left with what is known as the Cabo Six, which consists of Kali Cook, Malik Dreyer, Winter Donovan, Elise Hyatt, Dejan A. Jackson, and Nazir Wiggins, right? And their photographs were put out there so we were able to match names with faces. And everyone agreed with the names and the faces. We have on video the mother, Nancy Grace, and several other people stating that the aggressor in the video doing the attack that's attacking Shanquilla is Dejanae Jackson. And the picture that they showed was the um, picture of Dejanae in the pink and blue. Um, and that the person being attacked was Shanquilla. So we go, those are our givens. Then we come down here. Keep in mind the story that we just heard on, uh, from November the 22nd or so about <laughs> um, the medical professionals, medical staff, right? Medical staff was there at two o'clock and quickly, quickly, um, quickly reported that she was demise. Quickly reported she was gone, right? I said, then... This here, even though it's dated November the 19th, was what we didn't get access to this, wasn't put out there until March 13th when Benjamin L. Crump Esquire and Sue Ann Robinson Esquire sent this letter regarding the death of an American citizen, Shanquilla Robinson, in Mexico to President Joe Biden, March 13th, right? So she went to Mexico on a fact-finding uh, mission, and she came back with this. Mexico gave her this, this bag of lies here. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, the first one is um, from a, a worker at, from the Cabo um, Six, um, a male. They blacked out the name. We only know that it is a male age 39, right? And this person is saying that they know that the attack took place between 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. They made this part of their statement and they dated it November the 19th, right? 2022, that's when they're saying that. 
This is the interesting part down here. We move down to the second witness, which is the concierge. They blacked out the name. We only know that it is a 41 year old male and they're saying that they work for the, um, the villa, Cabo Villa, right? This person is giving the timeline. This is post, this person has um, stated that they are the concierge, right? It says here that I have been employed by blank or Cabo's villa in the United States where I work as concierge in attention and customer service. I provide assistance with doubts, any service that is needed, right? They say they provide any service, anything you need. I get it, right? And that's and they are establishing that Dejanay Jackson was the main client, right? This was this was Dejanay Jackson's plan, right? Plan here, right? So this person, the concierge, is stating that on October twenty eighth that the guests would arrive around 3 p.m. The main client was Dejan A. Jackson with the phone number. They put down <laughs> the phone number there. And all right, so one of the things that stands out to me in this document as um, being uh, lies is that how they're trying to paint the picture here. When people are telling the stories, they'll come up with these specifics. Here we have times, like they're very specific with the times. It would have been around 1719, that's 519 in military time, 519 p.m. 1719, right, was when they're saying that the person arrived here, right? They're, they're painting this picture here, right? We got all these um, times, right? Where they're putting, being precise with the time. She arrived at the Casa Villa around 20 hours, which is 8 o'clock p.m., right? I arrived at the villa about 15 minutes before. And upon entering, I saw a person of slim build, right? They're giving all these good descriptions here age description and all that stuff, right? Then as we start to come to the actual attack and then when they throw the bone in here, you can see they're going to get vague, right? So up until then, we're getting all these times here. We're getting times, all right? So right now we're at the dinner. I'm going to just read this here. This is them giving their description of the dinner. What happened? I only saw the male guests described above. So there's this concierge said that when he got there, he saw it, there were two. The chef told him that there were already two guests. We see on this here sign in sheet up here that there is a space missing. There is a space missing. Who is this mystery person, which would be eight? And then he's a concierge saying that he only saw one of the two people. That has some more um, looking into. It needs some more looking into. It says, Saw that um, only saw that two people, a couple, had arrived at the villa a few hours before. However, I only saw the male guest described above. I prepared my registration sheet, the information I have to provide. Okay, so maybe that's why he's saying that he didn't see the first person. So
maybe this is the couple and people were saying that um there's some other lady that was supposed to be on the trip maybe she is the other lady and that's why he left the space here for the other person that was the couple what y'all think on that <laughs> that just kind of popped them to me right now here <laughs> what y'all think about that <laughs> look at me nancy drew <laughs> Let me get on back down here so we can finish solving this here mystery. Ah, all right. Let me see here. All right. Where am I at? Where am I at? All right. That was very interesting. I think, you know, I'm, I might be on to something right there. If, if it's two people, he's saying it's two people, but he only saw one. Maybe that's why he left the blank up there because he knew it was two people, right? So, okay, here we go. Keep on moving down, down here. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and um, consider it. All right. So it says, I prepared my registration sheet. The information I have provided to the client, guacamole, tortilla chips, margarita, and I waited for the main client who arrived almost immediately in Tarscobo Transport. They got off with the grocery bottles of alcohol and tequila, put down their suitcases, start taking pictures of the villa. They looked excited. <laughs> In total, five people arrived. Three women, two of them African-American and one between Afro-American and mixed Latina. Of them, the main one named Dejanae Jackson, who is of sturdy build, <laughs> a dark skin with a thick voice, right? So look, why are they paint this picture here, huh? Why y'all think they paint the picture to say, you know, the sturdy build and the thick voice? She was accompanied by two male guests. So let's see here. Two African-American women. All right, so the two women would probably be Winter and Elise. But she came with two. Hmm. All right, anyway, we'll work that out. So I don't know. What are y'all thoughts on that? The two. Hmm. Okay, let me go on back to finish up in here. All right. So back down here. <laughs> Miss Jackson. All right. So I'm trying to get down to this here timeline here, right? When when the incident takes place. All right. So I introduced myself to the main guest, Miss Jackson, as her concierge and some of her guests of or friends to decide who would stay in the rooms. We returned to the dining room to sign the documents, which consist of guest registration, insurance included in the villa and resident <clears throat> complex rules, and provide a copy of each one of them. Registering the following, one Kali Cook. That ain't true. Hmm. All right. So this here really still gets me there. That little one up there. All right. So um, he left a blank space there. All right. So he's saying that Kali Cook one, Malik Dryer two, Winter Donovan three, Tranquilla four. Elise High Five, Dejanae Jackson, Six, Seven, Nazir Wiggins. All right, um, see here. The main guest stayed in the master bedroom, which is located at the end of the living room. There are two rooms at the end of the kitchen, the entertainment room, then an access with an open area which connects to more, to three more rooms. All right, so we move on down here. All right. 
All right, so he's saying here that the chef, he left there, and the chef and the waiter was also there. The next day, all right, here we go. All right, so remember the timelines here. Here we go. Here's the math. The next day at 1350 or 1352, again, here we go, clues with these very specific tight timelines, right? It was 1050, I'm sorry, 1350 or 1352, right? Okay, so very <laughs> right here. I received a text message from the main guest, Miss Jackson, asking me if I'm available and which was the nearest medical service. I greeted her and asked her how I could support her and if she was looking for a hospital. She answered yes. All right, so he's saying that 150 or 152 got the text, right? So he offered her a hospital and she said yes. So why did he call a doctor, right? If you offer the hospital, she said yes, why are you calling the doctor to send a doctor over there, right? So here's part where the story is falling apart, right? You put this hospital portion up in there. So if someone says that they are looking for some medical service and you say, are you looking for a hospital? And they say yes, okay? I think my friend has alcohol poisoning and needs emergency services and someone to speak or translate in Spanish for us. I think my friend has alcohol poisoning and needs emergency services. Right? So they're telling us here that it's already been identified as an emergency. Right? Do you see how when they're doing the lie, the, the truth will be up in there, but then they will slide in the sleight of hand there to put the lie on there. Right? I already said here, need a hospital. <laughs> Right? That's why you got to pull out these words. You got to really dissect it and see what it's saying here. It said to need a hospital and emergency, right? And someone to translate in Spanish for us. I offered to send her a doctor so he could determine if it was necessary to go to the hospital. And I told her that the doctor speaks English, right? So there again, when, why would the concierge take it upon themselves to say that if someone is saying that they need emergency, so now, you know, they're trying to put the blame on Dejanay here. We're going to put the blame on you, concierge, because if someone is saying that they need emergency service, why are you prolonging it by sending over a doctor who is not an emergency doctor? Even if it was an emergency doctor, that's still not the proper protocol. If there's an emergency needed, the 911 system or whatever number in that country to activate their emergency system needs to be activated. So we're putting the blame, you're putting the blame on yourself by painting this here lie. This here lie totally puts the responsibility on you, dear concierge, because you clearly say here that Dejanay said, I think my friend has alcohol poison and needs emergency services. So you dropped the ball. Right? You're so busy painting the picture here. You are being negligent. 
I offered to send her a doctor so he could determine if it was necessary. They said here, he, right? Then didn't they tell us that it was a lady doctor, right? All right, so and he, listen here, this says he. I offered to send her a doctor so he could determine if it was necessary to go to a hospital. And I told her that the doctor speak English. She answers, yes, please. I tell her that it costs $100 for the visit plus the medicine. I ask her if she agrees and she answers yes, as soon as possible. I tell her that I will make the call to request a service to which she answers yes, please. Around 2 p.m. on October 29th, I call Dr. Blank, who is our contact for medical attention of our guests. So if this doctor is their contact and he's saying that it's a he, how is it then that they are telling us that it was a lady doctor there? How is it that they are showing us pictures of a lady doctor when the man doctor is supposed to be their contact person, right? Right, okay? And around 2 p.m. is when they're making the call, right? <laughs> they're making the call at 2 p.m. Let me, let me see <laughs> Let me see what y'all over here doing. If I, if have I lost y'all? Y'all still with me? <laughs> Ooh, y'all still with me down here? All right. Um, let me see here. <laughs> Beverly says at Melanie B. Exactly. This was planned out before they even checked into the villa. Yes. So that's something that we should be able to get them on, right? This was already premeditated. It says, Melanie. Uh, Betty says, Emily, they kept asking her to dream. Yes. And like I said, okay, even we just read here that Dejanae went and got all of the fixings, right? Because they needed to set the stage for the alibi of the alcohol poisoning, right? So that's why I feel like they made it a point to make the video of them playing the drinking game, of them drinking at dinner and all that stuff. And you can even see, because they were bad actors, like nobody was acting like they were having a good time. They was just like, you know, <laughs> they like drank and they was just like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it was just something that you had to do these steps. Like this was part of the initiation here. Do the thing. Yes. Beverly says this was so premeditated. I agree with you. Big time at Beverly. Everyone's saying that they believe this was premeditated. And Karen says, we have 74 watching and 41 likes. Thank you so much. Now we can try for 70. Yes. Let me see what these likes is looking like over here. Yeah, 52. Let's get these likes up. I see 83 people here in the, this here chat. <laughs> I appreciate y'all so much. All right. So, um, I think I'm going to need to come back over here to get this second story because they're going to um, put, there's another, a 2 p.m. time, I think it's it here. Let me get over here. See. Okay. All right. So let me come here. All right. So let me share this over here. This again was back November the 26th. This here is, an, I think, Good Morning America. Yeah, Good Morning America. Okay, sorry, y'all. I thought it was maybe a little bit more information, but it wasn't. So, oops. Did I mess up there? Anything? For her um, demise. Wow. Yeah. You know, get all of the evidence. Hate crime. Wow. Uncertainty and questions <laughs> see compounded is. by the complexity of Robinson's demise in a country far away, far from her home, have been at the center of the mystery and outcry for weeks. Outcry for weeks. 
Wow. So this here is really interesting there that, you know, they put this definition of, of the femicide as of a woman at the hands of a man. Oh, right? wow. I didn't know that that was already out there. Like I said, I thought I had looked it up. Uh, okay. Well, well, well. See, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Hmm. Okay. All right. So let me see here. Betty says, sometimes talk is cheap. We need action. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And just like um, um, Sue Ann said, we need high level diplomatic intervention. And that's what we're doing here. And that's why we continuing to keep it hot by keeping her name out there. Justice for Shanquilla Robinson. Their parents need to be ashamed of themselves. Hmm. Beverly Fox says, if the U.S. can search for and pay ransom in just days, what is the holdup in Shanquilla's case? Matter of fact, this government never pays ransom for anyone. That case was very suspect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. They set up Shanquilla. I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. And two, I remember, you know, um, back in November, people were, when people were saying, you know, that this was, you know, more than what people, what we know about and stuff, folks was coming up in the chat, you know, talking about it was some type of a um, sacrifice for some type of um, Mexican, some, you know, there's some, some spooky ooky stuff out there happening and stuff like that so um yeah i agree with you on that i don't know what the hold up is and how um how far this rabbit hole goes beverly fox says at betty yellow this world has gotten so selfish and immoral those parents don't know what righteousness is. And one parent is supposed to be a minister or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're saying, hey, I remember you from way, way back in the day. Way, way back in the day. What's going on, Melanie? Yes. All right. So we're going to go on back down over here and start finishing up some on this here timeline. To show some more of these here bones. <laughs> Beauties and beautiful. What's up, Tamika? Tamika is in the hizzy. Um, you know, go ahead, dropping those blessings to all of the people. All right. Thank you, Karen. All right. It's on it tonight. On it tonight. Let's see here. Yeah, on it tonight. Thank you so much. Let's see here. Beverly says that Melody and Tamika, hey, thanks for joining us right y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming in here. Let's see. Um, LaJessica says, so you don't believe the concierge? No. No, no, no. I do not believe the concierge. I, I don't. I don't believe the concierge. And um, I, I don't. I don't believe the concierge. Let me get on back over to this concierge's letter. And... Uh, with all these bones in it, all these bones in it, right? All these bones in it, right? So we got all this here and because look at the how you're trying to describe and paint the picture here, right? At 150, all this stuff happening. And then on the uh, news story back in November, they were saying uh, 2 p.m., right? And then here's the, uh, the uh, another high, uh, highlighted part here. Is about... Okay, let me go on back down here. Back to the story. This is why I don't believe it, because it sounds like a bologna sandwich here. All right, so said around 2 p.m. that they called the doctor. All right, so already here they uh, exchanged the uh, gender of the doctor from a he, you know, and if they had to sit there calling a random doctor, I would say, okay, you know, maybe they uh, thought it was a he, but then the lady showed up. But then remember Nazir, when he said his, on his little live, he said that he was expecting, 
um, a lady doctor, and but a man showed up, right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> um, and this was back in November when he did his live. So they were expecting a man, but um, no, expecting a lady, but a man showed up. And then they changed the gender that it was a lady doctor. And then we go back to this story here. He said it was a, a man and that this is, this doctor is works for them. He's the, the doctor, um, the contact for the medical attention of our guests, right? So this doctor, the man, is the go-to do uh, for the for the guest here. All right. It says, and in about four minutes, Miss Jackson texted me asking me what I had been told. And I answered her that a doctor is going to contact her to check her friend. And she replies, okay, right? So somebody calling back in four minutes is pretty, you know, fast, right? So this to me should be an indication that this is urgent, right? They Four minutes, right? And then again, here we went with more specifics, right? Four minutes, <laughs> Chose the number four minutes later, calls back. No, did she call back? In four minutes, texted, excuse me, texted me asking what I had been told, right? She replies back, okay. Attached to this document is a screenshot of the conversation with Ms. Jackson and I where she asked me for medical help and the conversation is recorded on three letter size sheets of paper attached here too, right? Now, the next sentence starts at, at 1625 and that is 425 p.m. Blank texted me and told me that the girl has to be hospitalized, right? So now we, we go up here at 2 p.m. and making the call, all right? Four minutes later, so 2.04, the, the last conversation, I mean, uh, yeah, communication. And then between 2.04 to 4.25, what happened? There is no documentation of anything that happened, what took place, what transpired for nearly two and a half hours, right? Texted me and told me that the girl has to be hospitalized because after being evaluated, she has to be hospitalized and that her friends were finding out if they had insurance to which I asked if she is in serious condition and the doctor said no. The doctor said no. Now, two sentences above, it says that blank texted me and told me that the girl has to be hospitalized. Being hospitalized is serious, right? But the concierge says that he asked if the condition was serious. The doctor said no. So who said that the girl had to be hospitalized? Why did Blank text the concierge and say that the girl has to be hospitalized? Who made that decision? Only a doctor can say if someone needs to be hospitalized. So how is the doctor 
telling blank, expressing to blank that the girl has to be hospitalized because after being evaluated, she has to be hospitalized, right? So after being evaluated, she has to be hospitalized. But then the doctor says, no, that the condition isn't serious. Do y'all see all of the contra, all the contradictions in this? These are lies. Lies. If after being evaluated and the doctor is the only one who could evaluate and determine if someone needs to be hospitalized, how can they say that the doctor said that the condition was not serious? These are lies. To which I ask if she is serious condition and the doctor said no, but that she does need an IV, that she is practically unconscious and that was why she had to be hospitalized. What is practically unconscious? That's not even a term that a doctor would say. You're either conscious or unconscious. There are different levels of consciousness when you make an evaluation, but if you are evaluating someone's level of consciousness, <laughs> they're not conscious, that is serious. That requires a hospitalization. If someone is not conscious, you cannot be unconscious and it's not an emergency. The normal state of being is being conscious. If you're unconscious, something's wrong. Something wrong. <laughs> Something ain't right, okay? All right, so here we go with the rest of the lies, right? Told by Mexico, who back in November ruled this out, you know, said there was no foul play, that it was cardiac arrest due to alcohol poison, right? That's what they were saying. That was what, what was being said there. All right, so need to be hospitalized because she's practically unconscious and that's why she has to be hospitalized. Later, the administrator blank, blank, with telephone number blank, called me to ask if I requested an ambulance for the villa. I told him no. Okay. This happened in 2022. Why are they in a situation with someone who needs to be hospitalized utilizing a third party system to relay messages to get the person assistance. Why didn't the doctor who was on the scene call for an ambulance? Why are they calling, texting <laughs> the concierge to call an ambulance? Why? Why? What sense does that make? It makes no sense. No sense. I told him no. He tells me that security of 
Puerto Los Cabos is asking him about the request and access of ambulance to Casa Linda number 32. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is put out there to support that Winter made a 911 call, right? So this guy, he's saying blank, blank, say, hey, did you did you call the ambulance? Cause they down here trying to find out who calls the ambulance. What well, if the ambulance is supposed to be coming up to villa number 32? Right? Because remember, there was some talk that Winter supposedly made a 911 call, right? So I'm sure this is why this is put out there to say that. Later, Blank called me to tell me that the guest had died, right? Now listen to this. This is how you could tell that this is a lie. Later, Blank called me. Later, when all up in here, everything was specific, 1625, 2 p.m., 1350, 1352. See all these times here? Very specific, very precise. But now when we get down to this part, talk about the death. <laughs> Later... Blaine called me to tell me that the guest had died and asked me to go there as soon as possible. That he is already on his way to help whatever he can. All right. So no particular time. Later. Later. Right. So why is it that the concierge needs to get there as soon as possible? For what, right? For what? Why they gotta get there as soon as possible? I went to Puerto Los Cabos from Cabo San Lucas after having spoken with Blank. Upon arrival at the villa, I find a couple of municipal police officers talking to Blank in the parking area of the house, okay? So why are the police there? Who called the police and why? Who called the police? And why? The police don't come out with every ambulance call. Why did the police come out for someone who had alcohol poisoning? Can somebody tell me why the police are out there for an alcohol poisoning? <laughs> is, is anybody out there able to tell me why police officers are out there talking in the parking lot area of the house and one of the guests who was African-American descent, regular build, short hair, was coming and going from the house and calling by cell phone a relative or friend in the United States. Now, how do you know that they were calling a relative or friend in the United States? How, how do you know that? Using blank as a translator. I also saw the main client, Miss Jackson, Miss Jackson, making contact with the male guest, and on several occasions entering and leaving the house. During this time, I am waiting for blank to tell me what to do. Since he are my concierge team leader, 
So I entered the house when I initially observed the guests, relaxed, calm, sitting in the living room, near the bar and dinner table. Okay, so here we go again with more contradictions, right? So up here, he's painting the picture of two people and it sounds as if there's some anxiety up in here. Sounds like they're pacing back and forth. They're making phone calls. They're urgently doing something, right? So listen to all this information up in there, right? He's giving a description here, right? On the cell phone to a relative or a friend back in the United States. You know, maybe the translator told him that he, uh, who he was talking to, a relative or a friend. I, I, I don't know, right? So, but they're moving around, pacing back and forth, right? This sounds like some anxiety up here, right? They also painting Dejanay, she's back and forth in and out of the house. This sounds like some, you know, anxiety, right? Then all of a sudden, now when he comes in the house, everyone's calm and relaxed. How that happened? Huh? How are they now calm and relaxed, sitting in the living room near the bar and dinner table, right? This is why I don't believe them. These are lies. This is them painting a picture here to support the narrative, all right? Girl, you don't, girl, you be on the job. <laughs> She's saying that to Karen. All right, what's going on? Sign uh, Polly, Sienna, Polly, <laughs> go fix your lashes. <laughs> Who got lashes? Let's see here. Um, welcome and thanks for being here. Yes, thank you so much here. I know you're talking about me. I ain't got no lashes, baby. This here is just mascara. I've always had nice lashes. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to fix. <laughs> I'm all around natural beauty, baby. You ain't hear that? All around natural beauty. Let's see here. Um, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Olivia says, if Kali came, let's say, with Shanquilla and Nazir came next day, who are two males? Okay, one Malik. Who is that other male? Maybe I'm reading wrong. Okay, I'm, I'm with you on that, Olivia. Okay, so let's see here again. See here, see here, see here. Kali, let's say Kali came with Shanquilla. Then Nazir came the next day. Now, see, this here, Nazir come the next day, is suspect also because um, people was um, pointing him out as that being a lie, that he was actually already there. So if Kali and Shanquilla, yet, um, I don't know, but I feel you on that there. There's some, you know, some, uh, my antennas up on that too. I feel you. Olivia said, I'm speaking on two males who with Dejanay. Yeah, okay, so, okay. So, Malik, Kali, and um, who's that? Nazir, All right? So that's the three guys we know was there. So two males with Dejanay. Hmm. I don't know. I would say, okay, the two males with Dejanay, then maybe people are right about um, dude Nazir being there. So maybe that was, um, Nazir was the um, skinny guy, 25 to 30, that the concierge saw. And um, that one mystery girl that some people have reported, I, I'm not really good with names, but this this is good here. I, I like what, where you're going with that. It's, you know, let's get, get the, um, use an iron noodle. Let's see, Barely Faust says at Olivia, good question, but he also said that one male had dreads. Nazir said there was definitely only seven people there. 
maybe uh, because that one Malik guy didn't have like little braids or something. Um, maybe that's who he was talking about as far as the dreads. Let's see here. Karen, uh, uh, yeah, Karen says at Beverly Foster's. <laughs> and I'm still scrolling to see if I missed anyone's face. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey. All right. So, um, yeah. Shady people, yes. And too, we can see that the shade always started here with um with Mexico. Mexico been throwing this shade um since the beginning of this whole thing here. And see, Olivia says at Beverly, that's the burning question I have had. Who is this other male? Malik is one. Who other? Kali there, Nazir next day. I want to know. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, okay. Let me get back over here and see where I'm at. All right. So, okay. All right. So, okay. So, my purpose was to look for the main guest. This is back at the concert you're talking about. He came in there. And say they 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 all sitting in the living room, relax, calm, chilling at the bar. Concierge says, My purpose was to look for the main guest, Miss Jackson, and give her my condolences. Right? When I talked to her, I gave her my condolences. She thanked me and told me that they had talked to her friend's mother and mentioned that. This was so fast to lose her in an instant of having had too much alcohol. Now, see how to keep emphasis on the alcohol and why is he wanting to offer Dejanay condolences? Just because she was the main guest, why? Why is he? Put an emphasis on offering condolences to Dejanay. Right? Right? These were just some friends. Why didn't he offer condolences to anybody else? Why Dejanay? Right? Let's see what he has to say afterwards. This may give a clue as to why he's letting you know that, um, you know, his purpose was to offer his condolences to the main client. He said, I gave my condolences. She thanked me and told me that they had talked to her friend's mother and mentioned that this was so fast to lose her in an instant of having had too much alcohol. I asked her if I could give her a hug to which she said yes, right? So again, why is this important? Right? Why is this important? Who would put this off into a statement, right? This is how you can tell when people are lying because they always they're too dramatic, right? Right? So this here, this here has to be said because he's setting the stage. He's setting the stage to paint the picture because of what's about to be said next. All right. So let's just see why he thinks it's important to say, I asked if I could give her a hug to which she said yes. And she gave me a very indifferent hug, very cold. Right? So he's painting a picture here. I was coming with all this concern and I was giving my condolences and she was indifferent. The cold was hug. The, the, the hug was cold. It was cold. Right? So we paint the picture here to throw this one under the bus. Right? They planned it. Right? Very cold. I saw a very sad guest, a skinny girl, and I saw that she was in pain. I left 
that area and stayed outside the main entrance to give them space to mourn and grieve. Minutes later, I heard laughter. Minutes later, I heard laughter, right? Why, why is he going through all of this to show, you know, he's painting the picture here, setting the stage, right? The truth doesn't need all this explanation. The truth doesn't need anything to set the story up so you can understand why, right? It's called indication, it's bad acting. I approached Blank, who told me to leave, to go back to my villa in Cabo San Lucas, that he will be in charge of following up and supporting the clients and the authorities. I said goodbye to the client and I left for Cabo San Lucas later around 21 to 21.30, and that's 9 to 9.30. All right, so look at all of this time, right? From the last time they were specific about the time was up here at 16.25 or 4.25 p.m. That was the last specifics. And then we go to later, right? So now from later, all this stuff here, you can tell this is part of the story. Because, <laughs> yeah, from later, then we got all this description. We got the cold hug. We got the laughter. We got the nervous energy. We got the calmness here. We got all this stuff here, right? All this stuff. And then we go back to our specific times. Around 9 to 9.30, The main guest contacted me to request transportation to go to dinner because they had not eaten anything all day due to the situation. So I called Blank with phone number Blank, who owns Lands Inn. Okay, so let's back up a little bit here because up here, he said, I left that area outside the main entrance to give them space to mourn and grieve. Minutes later, I heard laughter. I approached Blank, who told me to leave and go back to my villa in San Cabo, San Lucas, that he will be in charge of following up and supporting the guests and the authorities, right? So if he was already relieved of his duties, why is he attending to Dejeuner at nine, between nine and 9.30? You off, the, you off duty, you've been relieved. Do y'all see that, right? When people are, writing and stating lies, they it, it's not going to add up correctly because they're lies. The truth doesn't follow this distracting type of pattern because the truth is just the truth. When you tell a lie, you mess up because you're not aware of how the sequence needs to go. If Three sentences up here, you were told to leave and that someone else has taken over, blank, then took over the case, blank, then relieved you of your duties. Why are you finding transportation for Dejeuner and the, the gang to go out to dinner? You already been told to go home, go back to your villa right let me go back up here it says i left that area he you know first he said he saw a, a, a very sad guest a skinny girl and i saw and i see here this here is painting the picture so this here to help 
somebody or the skinny girl out to him. Help the skinny girl out here who was sad, right? Skinny girl was sad. I left that area and stayed outside the main entrance to give them space to mourn and grieve. Minutes later, I heard laughter. <laughs> I approached Blank, who told me to leave, to go back to my villa in Cabo San Lucas, that he will be in charge of following up and supporting the clients and the authorities. I said goodbye to the clients and left for Cabo San Lucas. Later, around 21 to 21.30, here we go with some more lies. The main guest contacted me to request transportation to go to dinner. So why are you dealing with the main guest if you've already been told to go back? Who, really? This why, Kyronia, this why I don't believe him. Lies. Lies, lies, lies. All right, so we got some more hellos and greetings to people here. <laughs> greetings and welcome to the chat. Thank you, Karen, for welcoming everybody. And Tamika says, bags of lies from Mexico. Yes, Nabin's given us the lies since the beginning. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. See, a Beverly says, Nazir was so was also expecting a male doctor, but I guess they sent the doctor that was uncalled, the female doctor. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. That's what I'm saying, y'all. See, when you tell so many lies, you 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 forget. That's why it's best to just stick to the truth. And if the chips fall where they may, Beverly says the U.S. has to make an example out of these sickos because if not, a lot of people are going to be offended in Mexico. Oft in Mexico, excuse me. Yes, let me read that one more time. The U.S. has to make an example out of these sickos because if not, a lot of people are going to be off in Mexico. Yes, a lot of people have already been off in Mexico. We saw that, right? You know, and they used the same little cookie cutter alibi of alcohol poison. That's exactly what they do. All right, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get off of this here document because I need to um, play the video of, of me reading that one bone and actually believing it. <laughs> Let me go back over here into this here. When um, I had thought um, that we missed the fact that um, Dejanay had already been arrested. So I think it was on this one here. You know, books because most. Uh, yeah. Uh oh, let me stop it. Let me pause it here. All right. So this here was two, ooh, two months ago. February the 2nd. All right, so February the 2nd. All right, so now after this, I'll, I'll be wrapping it up, y'all. But I had to do this because um, I was really, um, when I discovered this, I, I was like, yay, y'all, we've been sleep this whole time. Uh, you know, Dejanay been arrested. And I was adamant about it, right? <laughs> Look at my face. <laughs> All right, Look at me. I'm about to, I'm, I'm ready. All right, so this is me. Um, back in February the 2nd, and I, um, I'm not sure how I stumbled on the document uh, from the Mexican reporter, the Metro Poly um, lies about um, the arrest. And um, I was um, strong on my opinion on that, that, you know, the people had been arrested. And that's why, you know, I went back and, and had other um, you know, supporting, <laughs> supporting evidence and stuff like that. And, um, it wasn't until, um, a month later when, um, Sue Ann and, um, Ben Crump, uh, came out and the mother, the family said that no one's been arrested till I, um, accepted that, that no one had been arrested. Hey, what's up, Lauren? Lauren Cantrell Lifestyle says, Elise Hyatt's mother is a pastor and her sister is a retired 
police officer. Maybe she's the skinny one that the uh, dude was saying was um sad or something like that, right? And uh, yeah, so folks is connected. See, Beverly Foster says, "How come the concierge never mentioned it would cost five thousand to go to the hospital, but he freely admitted it would only cost a hundred for the doctor visit?" Hmm. The concierge is covering his behind. Yes. And that's why they, you know, that's why <laughs> he's telling the story like that. Like, yeah, I was coming, I was trying to give condolences and they was in there laughing and, you know, she gave me a cold hug, you know, she's phony baloney from the top, you know, <laughs> he covering his butt for real, right? You are absolutely right on that. Karen says at Lauren, welcome and thanks for joining. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. All right. So here, Betty says, recently they found three or four people in Mexico dead. This was on the news. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, back months ago when we first started talking about this, you know, the, the next day there were more. So we see, y'all, how this is happening. Right? Right? Yeah. So women, you know, we have to be vigilant and aware and all that stuff vigilant and aware hey what's going on deidre deidre said maybe they did poison her not strong enough huh huh beverly says justice for shanquilla and all of her loved ones that is left behind to deal with this blatant miscarriage of justice yes absolutely right yep all righty, let's see here. Hi, ladies. It says there's not honest about her being unconscious. <laughs> yeah, that's how you can tell lies too, right? Because it's vague, right? She's practically unconscious. What does that mean, practically unconscious? You're either conscious or you're not conscious, right? <laughs> right? So pick one. But when you're telling these lies, you got to be kind of vague with it. But again, that's not the conversation. That's not the um, vocabulary. That's not how a doctor would speak. And two, if someone was barely conscious, there's never a time that anybody would want to be left alone. And they were trying to get this person out to the hospital, right? And they already said that, after evaluation, they need to be hospitalized, and all of a sudden it's not serious, just need an IV, but don't need to go to the hospital. After evaluation, need to go to the hospital, barely conscious. I mean, this whole, you know, crazy conversation is crazy making behavior. Kendall, hey, what's going on? Kendall says, whoever wrote that statement contradicts its very own statement. Why would the doctor say no? but she needs to be hospitalized. Thank you. Thank you. And that's what I'm saying, that they are taking us for dodo birds. They are playing us for fools, y'all, right? And they're just treating us like we are stupid. Dum-dums. Beverly Fox says, I don't care if it was Mexico. They have to abide by the Hippocratic Oath, just like American doctors. She is not conscious, but not in a serious state. <laughs> then why did she ask to be to hospitalize her? Thank you. Oops. Sorry. Let me mute this and fix this. Hang on a second, y'all. Let me fix this mic. Okay, hopefully I didn't make it worse. But um, yeah, good. That's what I'm trying to say. Right? You know, no way. But Jessica said, so do you believe the autopsy? <laughs> um, you mean the one that's attached to this here document? No, I do not believe the autopsy. And the reason why is because in the beginning, 
when we uh, when uh, the death certificate was released, it listed two two causes of death: severe spinal cord injury and atlas luxation. Even in the beginning, before they um, narrowed it down to the term atlas luxation, they said neck dislocation. Right? We know that that means you know her hip was ripped off of her. It was you know, uh, twisted off of her neck, off of her body, head knocked off, internal decapitation, right? So this whole Mexican autopsy, I do not believe it because it's coming from the police. Police are not doctors. They are not qualified to determine a cause of death They're not qualified to make the medical judgments, decisions, any of that stuff. They wouldn't be documenting that. And those are your clues right there to know why those are lies, why that is fake information. (laughs) Betty says, a bunch of liars. Yes, right? Because imagine they've been selling this here cover-up scam for years, people have been coming out there, often people, <laughs> shout out to Beverly, often people in Mexico and getting away with it. That's why I believe it was planned because they were very confident that they were going to get away with this. They were so confident that they went to the mother's house. It went to the mother's house. That's why I don't believe that they panicked and dressed the body and did all that stuff. Why would they dress the body when they already embarked their alibi? They had first class service. They still dealing with the concierge who was, you know, job to give the people whatever they wanted. What you need, I get it for you. Why am I dressing the body? I already paid for the alibi. I ain't panicked. Yes, you were right. A bunch of lies. Bailey Fox says Mexico is trying to wash their hands of the whole thing. The concierge is saying he was bamboozled by Dejanay, but I kind of feel he is not being totally honest. Just a good feeling. Of course not. Yeah. He they trying to paint the picture that. They were manipulated and outsmarted by um, Dejanay. I'm trying to say that that is a bologna sandwich. It's a bologna sandwich. There's no way that a doctor is um, counting on the people at the scene to tell them what's happening. There's no way that a doctor or any medical professional's staff would have been able to come in there and see those injuries on Shanquilla and say that, yeah, alcohol poison. When it would have been obvious to see those injuries on the assessment. The busted lip, there had to have been some swelling, some facial swelling the neck hanging off of the body, the vertebrae all contorted in the spinal column, the severe spinal cord injury that was visible on the video. There's no way in the flesh that those injuries would not have been visible. Yeah. 
So that's where they're trying to get far away from this story. You see here, Karen says at Lighty, for be, for because and Sue and Robinson, their entire case hinge upon whatever she was, uh, what whether she was conscious or unconscious. Well, according to the death certificate, the cause of death was severe spinal cord injury and atlas luxation and the life expectancy after receiving those injuries is 15 minutes. We also have, I'm going back over here to this. We also have here um, in their little bogus autopsy here that, um, oh, okay. So if that's the case, then 15 minutes after the injury, what they said here is what I wanted to pull, pull over here. This person, the first um, witness, said that the video of the attack happened between 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., right? So if that happened up there and the time, the life expectancy is 15 minutes, how is it possible that there were any signs of life at 2 p.m.? There wouldn't have been any signs of life at 8.45, at 9 a.m. At 9.30, at 10, at 10.30, at 11, at 11.30, and so on and so on and so forth to where if they're getting phone calls or text messages at 1.50, there's no way that when anyone got there, any medical professional arrived on the scene that they saw anything but a corpse. So the case should ride or hinge upon the fact that Shanquilla was already deceased before two o'clock. So I need to back over here. <laughs> and yeah, there we go. All right, so a good one here. So don't we ain't gonna let them distract us with that stuff, right? We sticking to the math and the science and the facts that the death certificate states what the cause was and the life expectancy. Beverly Fox says, because they don't speak Spanish, that's why we know they were calling the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Karen says... It was actually a crime scene. The Mexican police just weren't treating it like one. But how did they know it was a crime scene? How did they know it was a crime scene when it was alcohol poison? So again, why were the police there? Why were the police there? Why were the police there? All right, so here we go here. I'm going to go ahead and roast me. This is me on um, February the 2nd. I am um, going to be reading off some information <laughs> from the Metro, from the um, reporter, the Mexican reporters that's feeding um, some lies here. But y'all can see here, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that I got something here, right? That I, I'm, I'm, I'm Shedding some light on some information here. So let me see. Pull up here. <laughs> right? Uh-oh. But we're still going to always support the truth. So um, for those of you who don't know, like I said, I'm 52 years old, and I have over 30 years of nursing experience. And just being 52, I'm representing the population of the Gen Xers, right? Let me move up a, little bit. a lot of times folks don't want to read. They want to be entertained, but we are here so, seeking the justice yeah. for real. So you see, black I'm standing on my square here because I'm about to read some information. It's high. I'm feeling like this is facts because 
this hot where they hide the stuff at in the in the reading because they know people don't want to read. So I'm thinking <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling the I'm, I'm I'm shining the light. Black men are evil. Ooh, wow. <laughs> That's the name says you are you sure she's arrested? All right, so we're gonna read. We're gonna read, right? We're gonna read, and then we're gonna see. When, uh, we're gonna see, all right? So yeah, all right. Let's see. Uh, black men are evil. Wow. What? A, <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you for keeping her Shanquilla name gone. Hope this would be going, but we need all five of them in jail because they are all guilty. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, yeah, right. You see, Tina says, I hope this is true and not a rerun of 1128. <laughs> it was also saying she was arrested and she wasn't. Lord have mercy, RN. Don't do that to us. Please, 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 beautiful, tell us. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to read. I'm going to read that to you. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm about to read. I'm about to show y'all. That she was already arrested on 1128. Um, yeah, all right. Look at me. And we're gonna show, I mean, we're gonna see that. So when if she was arrested and detained then with this number, right? When did she get unarrested? Right? To have all this other stuff happening. So yeah. Like I said, I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna read all of this stuff up. We just gonna we gonna jump right to it. <laughs> so oh okay. Look, I'm looking over here at some of the comments. Here go look here. Tanya Carter, she was always, I appreciate you all, but we cannot focus on one story as there are so many. Now, of course, I didn't see get a chance to go through all of these here comments and stuff. Because I, you can see in my face, I'm convinced that the story that I'm, you know, here, we missed it, y'all. They got a number. Here is the booking number. <laughs> and, um, you know, you know, we we missed out on this, y'all. We missed out on this here. So, uh, Tina, yep, yeah, y'all, I, I was I was off. <laughs> I took the bait. I was forced, um, let's see here. Hey, Betty, look here. Betty, you was over here. Here come a comment from Betty. <laughs> Betty says over here, hello at our everyone. Okay, so we <laughs> go Betty, Betty over here again tonight. <laughs> Betty says, boycott Mexico, everyone. <laughs> All right. Y'all, thank y'all so much for y'all ones that, you know, been uh, um, sticking, you know, we all together and stuff like that. We we learning together. Here we go. What, what was that time about over here? All right, so we're going to start off here with this article. Let's see here. All right, so we share screen. All right, so this article. I right, says the name of Dejan A. Jackson is now criminal file J664 dash or slash 2022. The government of Mexico has taken precautionary measures so that the name of the murderer of Shanquilla Robinson was not exposed to media. All right, so we later found out that this here was a lie this story came out this was a lie and the local news or the american news wasn't re making any reports so this was all that was out there this was all that was out there which was one of the reasons why i was like okay so this this must be true because here we have a criminal number they telling us here that you know what they got to do in order to be able to do this. They check the boxes, um, and then two. Um, so this must be true. This must be true, and this is um, you know they the, the regular news people hadn't said anything. This is what we got. So until somebody could put in some new evidence or to show something else. 
uh, aside from your feelings or your opinion, we going with this. And, and that was my um, stance. And I was standing strong on that stance. Let's see here. I'm going to uh, go through all that. I just wanted to come on here today to say <laughs> and kind of like laugh at myself, too, because you can see, look at my face. <laughs> I, I'm upset that this whole time we've been going back and forth and that here this story had fell by the wayside. And if this here, here happened on this time back in in um, November, when did she get out? If we all said here that she was in, right? And again, I'm still not even sure how the story um, got in there and then how um, we got on to the next one. But again, we see that the Arthur, the thing that we have in common, the, the dots that always get connected is that these stories, these lies have all come from Mexico. Mexico, Mexico, Mexico has been the people, the person who's putting in the lies, right? So let me see, I'm gonna skip up here. All right. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> right. So there's more. All right. There's more. <laughs> Next one. Ooh, I'm laughing because I can see in my face that I just know. You know what I mean? I'm just telling y'all. Look here. There's more. Right. According to this article, this is what went down. <laughs> Arrested. Ed. <laughs> I was on one. I was on one. <laughs> All right. Because if this is saying that she was arrested, <laughs> right? When did she get out? Right? We just followed the trail when they started throwing the bones saying, oh, she's still at work. Oh, this, that, and the other. Right? This was already put in writing. But that's the quickest way. That's the easiest way to keep you blind because people don't want to read. But th that is true, though. However, that is true, though. Uh, however, you know, we continue to read, and that's how we found other bones and stuff like that, too. So <laughs> I, I support me with my passion on all that stuff. And, and then, too, the truth is always still going to come out to the surface. So like I said before, Never be afraid to adjust your position because what you believe today, when the, especially when the proof is put presented to you, to hold on to your beliefs when the truth has been presented to you is delusional thinking. So when the proof was put out there that this was um, fake, I immediately, um, you know, changed that too. So. Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there to show y'all that I'm human. However, I'm still willing to, you know, I'm here willing to grow and to um, you know, do all that good stuff. All right, so let me see here. Go on back over here. We'll be coming in for a landing soon. <laughs> I just wanted to show y'all that too because, um, like I said, that was back in February. And um, that case um, number went back and then I saw how I wasn't the only one that had reported about the arrest, that that was the story in the narrative that was being out, uh, reported on by, you know, most YouTubers at the time. I'm not sure how we uh, stopped. And Olivia says, exactly at our end, did Nazir come early? Because it's only three males in Cabo, Malik, Kali and Nazir, the equation has a male there before Nazir. This why it's not adding up. That's true. So let me see here. Let me go. Uh, oh, I thought I had to me off. Um. Yeah. Let, let's take a peek again at this little um, the roster over here and see if we can't. Make some sense out of these numbers here. Okay, so let me see. Uh, exactly, Aaron. Did Nazir come early? Because it's only three males in Kabul. All right. One, two, three. Let 
and one, two, three. Joya, that's the name. That Joya, Joya something is the name of the other friend that folks is saying that was supposed to be there. Maybe that's the name that's supposed to go in this blank. I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question there. Um, we'll have to, um, you know, move on that. Said so my thing is this is from Olivia again. My thing is what is hold us? What is the hold up? Is it the charge of femicide that is not under U.S. treaty? Why not change it to murder? They playing political games with a woman's unaliving. Just shameful. I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. And two, I really think that it has a lot to do with the fact that Shanquilla is not only a woman, but a black woman, right? We know that um, women's lives are, you know, second, women are second class citizens around the world. And that a lot of countries have problems with femicides in their own country where they're not prosecuting or holding responsible the men in their country for you know, um, femiciding or domestic violence, all those things on the women. We have our own problems here also, too. Yes, very shameful. I agree. You see, Beverly Fox says, the concierge said Dejanay signed Nazir's name on the sheet, although he wasn't there yet. Nazir said the same thing. Plus, his ticket backs that he arrived the next day. Um, yeah. I don't know. I somebody had broke down his timeline too, also um not being totally honest. All right. You see, hey. Nana's W Corner says, good night, RT, it being a wow. Yes. Hey, Mods. All right. Go on. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, see, Karen says, yes, but Crump and Robinson can't do anything to them criminally. They are civil attorneys and suing the six isn't going to yield what they are seeking. So... If she was conscious, it helps their case. Yeah. The case should be the fact that we saw Deja Day Jackson brutally attack and take the life of Shanquilla Robinson when she swung her over, snapped her neck, twisted her spine. 15 minutes after that, she quickly expired. Those injuries match up with what it stated on the death certificate as the cause of death. Ah, that's the case there. Yeah, no mourning or grieving going on over there. Let's see here. Um, Karen says, good evening and welcome. She's welcoming the people to the chat. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so um, that, okay. So <laughs> I guess we can see some of this here. Um, Somebody asked about the um, autopsy report. All right, so they did attach um, <laughs> a bogus autopsy report on, on this here, too. Um, however, it's getting super late. All right, so let me just read a few more of these here comments. And um, then, like I said, um, the thing, the goal now is, is to keep the name out there. So, um, you know, be 
putting out some more cuts and chops of, of this here to give a platform for us to continue to seek the justice for Shanquilla. Um, like um, Giselle pay up one of the mods here. She usually comes over and drops uh, the petition that has been circulating now for, you know, several months for justice for Shanquilla Robson. And just like Sue Ann Robinson said, we need high level diplomatic interventions right so we got some thank yous up in here and all that good stuff and more welcomes all that good stuff all right so thank y'all so much we'll read a few more days and then gonna bid y'all farewell until the next time like i said um we're doing it over here <laughs> what's going on cookie uh for x cookies for love <laughs> Cookies for love. And um, and thank y'all to the ones who have been sending me um, emails with different contents, stuff like that. Even this document was, you know, sent to me um, by um, uh, a member, highly favored. And, um, you know, thank y'all so much for, um, you know, Keeping keeping the community, keeping it high for Shanquilla. Julie says, yes, I hit the like button. Good evening all around, all around and are in beauty host. <laughs> Justice for Shanquilla and other victims. Yes, 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 yes. Right? And all of us too. Um, I may drop the link. I haven't dropped the link in a, a good little while because we used to have our testimony service, right? We used to have our testimony service. People come up and um, get a testimony or even, you know, clear a good name for, um, you know, talking in the chat, something like that. So I haven't done that in a while. So I'd like to extend that before. I wrap up in case, um, you know, somebody would like to um, come up and share their testimony or share some words of encouragement, uh, talk about, it's there, and see if pin it, talk about, um, you know, what's been going on since this whole Shanquilla thing has happened and, you know, what what's been going? What has it done? What has happened for you and affect your life here? Oh, look at here. Let me go on down here. What's up, Ty Libra in the hizzy? Right from back in the beginning. Ty Libra says hello, Queen Beauty. R N. Let's see where am I at over there? Ty Libra, my OG, OG in the hizzy. Right, and here, congratulations on school and all that good stuff. What are you taking up? What are you, what you gonna do with your life? <laughs> all right, so um, Ty Lieber is school full-time and working full-time, and I know your pain on that. Um, I also, was at the time in my life, I was working full-time and going to school full-time too, and um <laughs> doing all kind of stuff there. So I understand and offer my encouragement and support to you. Beverly Foster says, Mexico act like people here in the U.S. don't get funky drunk all the time. <laughs> We've been boozing it up, but hardly ever unalive by alcohol poison. Yes, must be something wrong with their liquor. <laughs> I agree. And two, what usually happens when you had too much to drink, right? Right? Don't you usually throw it up? The body will try to save itself. You're always trying to save yourself. So, you know, you would um, just you would just chuck that up, right? You would throw it up. You would throw it up. <laughs> you would throw it up. And then two... If Shanquilla was um, so drunk from the alcohol poisoning and barely conscious, right? We saw her before the attack, before her neck was broken and snapped off her body. We saw her standing up, right? She was standing up right, right? She wasn't 
barely conscious. She was standing up erect. Right? Yeah. All right, just for Shanquilla. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Ty Lieber. Seeing that um, you're a champion. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Fake doctors. Exactly. <laughs> Fake doctors. <laughs> I know. I should. Um, I'm just just for um, shirts and giggles here. I think I'm gonna play my uh. <laughs> A little quick short with the fake doctors in there, just so I can get a good little laugh off. I don't know. We'll see. I need to do more here. So we got some more hellos and greetings here. All love. I, con I commend your level of persistence and stamina. Thank you so much. And, and because when I get these compliments and encouragement, it just really encouraged me to keep going because... You know, I, I wanted to throw the towel in on several occasions and, um, you know, move on to something else. However, um, you know, with the gratitude and with people saying the things, you know, about uh, thanking me for continuing on, I just, I keep doing it for that, right? Because I know that um, it's going to be a blessing in that. Thank you so much, Ty Libra. I appreciate your encouragement. All right. And um, where is Julie? Oh, okay, I see up there. All right. Did I, how did I miss that? Oh, I did. I saw that. Yeah. Thank you, Julie, for coming in here. I appreciate you. All right. So let me see where I'm at. All right. Ty Lieber says, run the likes up. That's right. Hopefully, y'all get these likes up in here. Um, again, you know, with this whole algorithm stuff, I know there's been some human hands that have had a uh, hand at the whole, um, you know, poking hose in um, this here channel and stuff like that. But just like I said, you cannot damn the ocean, right? You may be able to have some distractions and, um, you know, think you slowing something down, but guess what? When the time comes for the dam to break, when the wave comes back, it's coming back. So, um, whatever. Hmm. Enjoy your life. Say, Be uh, Beverly Fox says, didn't one of Cabo Six mother travel, travel to Mexico just before they did? I don't know. I didn't hear anything about that. You see, Beverly says, as always, it's been a blast chatting with all of you, but I got to go. Thank you, all around at your beauty, are in mods and chat for keeping this case alive. Justice for Shanquilla. Yes, we, I'm, we're going to be coming in for a landing to say goodnight to everybody. Yes, the Lieber, Ty Lieber says, peace and blessings at Beverly Foster. Yes. La Jessica, been here for the whole long time since they told <clears throat> the doctor, she had a fall in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I heard that, Beverly. Yes. All right. Hey, Angeline Bell says, if they were doing their job, they would have observed it was a crime scene. It's a police academy. <laughs> it's, uh, sorry, <clears throat> it's in police academy one-on-one. Exactly. And so as that in that one letter, they kind of, you know, told on themselves or made a Freudian flip when they said, you know, that the police were, th were there. So why would the police be there if it wasn't a crime scene, right? If it was just, you know, alcohol poison, right? The police wouldn't have been there, right? So they, they messing up with the lies because <laughs> it's so contradicting. You see, Ty Lieber, thank you. So with the copyright disclaimer, <laughs> yes, under the section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances is made for fair use for the purpose such as criticism, comments, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. <laughs> thank you. All right. It says, they let Shanquilla suffer all day long. 15 minutes after the injury, you know. Shanquilla was gone. Thank you for those roses and thumbs up. Pre oh, there go my girl. Hey, what's going on? 
Uh, Giselle Payam, that's what I was telling y'all about. Um, she got the uh, link for the um, petition. And, uh, you know, so we put our energies together on one instead of spreading it out or trying to um, slow down somebody else's petition. You know, over here, we not about no haterade. You know, if we are all here seeking just for Shanquilla Robinson, we shouldn't be hating on if somebody is, you know, doing something and they getting some views or some clicks or some notoriety, you know, it, it shouldn't matter, right? We want this to be, you know, everybody to be a big voice. So um, Giselle has a uh, petition and instead of, you know, me going out trying to get a petition so I could put my name on it. I'm encouraging all of us to, yay, okay, go ahead and click on this and fill out this petition. I've signed it, and many of you all have signed it too. Um, we're moving, but it's slow. It's slow because there are some haters out there that try to do things to um, slow down the growth of this. I don't, I don't know why, but the people out there that do that are the people out there that do that. All right. So please keep signing the petition. We are at 39,524 and the goal is 50. We make huge goal to get justice. Go to change.org or, or hashtag justice for Shanquilla Robinson this change.org, right? So that's what we do here. We we support, right? Because um, it's it's nicer and stronger when the found when everything is put together. I suppose everything all splashed out. Everybody trying to get their own, um, you know, name up out there. And that's me dropping the link there. All right. So then we made it down here to the bottom. All right. All about natural beauty, RN. You, Rick, my beauty queen. You <laughs> just passing by to say hello. Thank you so much. All right. So um, thank you all so much. And all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers, um, thank you all so much. And I will see you all soon. Um, and and, and y'all come by and go ahead and watch all of the um, clips and cuts and all that good stuff that I put out there. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, okay. I see here. <laughs> You rock. Thank you so much. All right. I rock. All right. Love y'all. I'll see y'all later. Peace and love. And hopping.